Here's your news for November 26, 2019. We're starting off today by looking at Monday Night Raw, as fans got treated to a special dark match once the show had finished. After Kevin Owens left the ring following the main event, Drew McIntyre appeared and leveled the prize fighter with a claymore. Facing SmackDown's Universal Champion Bray Wyatt in a cage match, McIntyre tried his best to topple the Fiend, but got very little offense in. With the arena bathed in red light, the Fiend demolished McIntyre for the majority of the match, pinning the Scotsman after his sister Abigail and Mandible Claw combo that sent the crowd home happy. Though Raw ended in a big way with an appearance by The Fiend, the three-hour show also kicked off big time, thanks to the alleged locker room leader Seth Rollins. Coming out to yet another mixed reaction, the architect was bombarded by CM Punk chants, which Rollins acknowledged, saying, I tried to get him here, he wants to sit in LA, Rollins said, and talk about a change that he's too afraid to make himself. This didn't go down well with the Chicago crowd, who booed Rollins heavily for what he said, as it seems a match between the two is looking more likely. Rollins has spent the last week trying to get a feud going with the best in the world, and this latest response comes after Punk criticized Rollins' social media blunders on WWE Backstage. Adding to the teased heel turn of the Beast Slayer, Rollins hosted a town hall meeting with the entire Raw roster, and Rollins, seeing himself as a locker room leader, took center stage. What followed was one of the best opening segments for Raw in a long time, as the former Universal Champion blamed everyone but himself for the poor performance at Survivor Series, as Raw scored just one point. Among his targets were Randy Orton, as Rollins called the 13-time World Champion the weak link of the men's team, and also went after Charlotte Flair for not being the last remaining member of the women's team, comparing her to her Hall of Fame father. Saying that AOP talks tough but never does anything, Rollins finally alienated the entire locker room by berating Rey Mysterio, the most universally beloved superstar, for failing to beat Brock Lesnar despite using a lead pipe and quote, help from your stupid kid. In a bit of storyline brilliance, Rollins repeated to himself, I'm just trying to do the right thing, as it seems the pressure of being the top babyface on Raw has finally caused the architect to crack. After the meeting, Kevin Owens would stay behind and stun the loudmouth, and a match was set for the two in the main event. Teasing a feud between the two, the match itself was pretty good, but came to a screeching end when AOP crashed the party. Despite Owens' best efforts to fight them off, the prize fighter was quickly overpowered, and the show ended with two curb stomps by Rollins, who, interestingly, wasn't attacked by Akam and Rezar. WWE has done a fantastic job building to a heel turn for Rollins, as unlike Roman Reigns all those years ago, the company is paying attention to what the crowd has to say. Also on Raw, Umberto Carrillo got another shot at the US title, but the young cruiserweight only got down the entrance ramp before he was attacked. Being battered by the OC, all it took was one magic killer on the steel steps to keep Carrillo out for good, as Ricochet, Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, and Rey Mysterio all appeared afterward. With Umberto's body still warm, the four quickly campaigned for their own title matches, and after a fatal four-way, it was Mysterio who earned the huge opportunity. Despite a combined age of 86, Mysterio and Styles did fantastic in the ring, as from the action in the ring to the OC getting tossed from ringside, a ref bump, and Orton making the save, this was one of the best matches of the four-day Chicago weekend. With Rollins' criticism still in his mind, Mysterio proved everyone wrong this time, defeating Styles to claim the US title and celebrating with his son in a true feel-good moment. Though the Mysterio family is closer than ever, the ordeal between Rusev and Lana is only driving the two further apart. After hating her soon-to-be ex-husband with a fake pregnancy and divorce papers, this latest restraining order should have kept the Bulgarian from the building, but that didn't happen. During a match between Bobby Lashley and Titus O'Neil, a wild Rusev appeared, attacking his wife's new man and putting Lashley through the announce table. Later getting arrested for his actions, it seems this storyline isn't ending soon, but at least it gave for some good action this week. Now, well, NXT won Survivor Series last week, the real winners were the network subscribers who stuck around, as they saw the first episode of the Broken Skull Sessions. On the show, Stone Cold Steve Austin interviewed The Undertaker, allowing fans to see a different side of the dead man who spoke about his friendship with Vince McMahon as well as an epic story of partying with Cypress Hill. 
After the success of this, PW Insider is reporting that WWE now wants CM Punk for a future episode, and if true, it'll be very interesting to see what he has to say. Since his return, Punk has remained solely on WWE Backstage on Fox and didn't even hint at appearing at Survivor Series, as the best in the world has stayed retired since 2014. Speaking of WWE Backstage, the show continues to grow after its shaky start, as tonight's episode will feature Triple H, who will talk about NXT, Survivor Series, and more. While having the game on is a huge scoop for Renee Young and Booker T, Fans shouldn't hold their breath if they're expecting an altercation between the WWE's COO and the best in the world, as WWE on Fox Twitter has confirmed that Punk won't be on the show. For everyone asking about Punk's WWE status, Triple H has confirmed that there's been no talks about Punk re-signing with WWE, though the door has been cracked open for a return, despite a few hurdles. With all the trash talk of Seth Rollins, it seems a match between the two seems likely, making the deal between Punk and WWE imminent. As the old saying goes, never say never in wrestling, and while there was a time when another Punk match was impossible, now it seems a real possibility. From WWE to AEW now, as the decision to host a special Bash of the Beach edition of Dynamite continues to cause issues. A report by Fightful Select reports that many in WWE are trying to find a way to stop the name before Chris Jericho's cruise, saying, Some in WWE aren't happy with AEW promoting a Bash at the Beach, and there's talk that they may attempt to take action to stop it. While Bash at the Beach may be a WCW term, the name is owned by Cody Rhodes, who also owns various other names based on nostalgia. WWE owns the name The Bash, which they're claiming could be confused with Bash at the Beach, but to be fair, the company hasn't held a Bash pay-per-view since 2009, as it was replaced by Fatal 4-Way and Money in the Bank the next year. Speaking of AEW, last week's Dynamite hosted a Dynamite Dozen Battle Royal which was won by MJF and Hangman Page, but the big talking point of the match was the appearance of Billy Gunn. MJF eliminated the Hall of Famer to gain a lot of heat, but according to Fightful, the issues were with Gunn himself. The report reads, there were comments about Billy Gunn using his WWE name on AEW Dynamite, more in the sense of displeasure among WWE as opposed to something that would lead to legal action. It's unlikely that WWE will take AEW to court over Gunn working their show, but in this current climate and the legal issues with Bash at the Beach, it seems anything is possible. Back to WWE now and the backlash of Corey Graves' comments made during this past Saturday's TakeOver event continues to be felt. During the show, Graves mocked Mauro Ranallo for what he saw as talking too much, and this isn't the first time Ranallo, who suffers from bipolar disorder, has been ridiculed by his fellow commentators. After Graves' comments, Ranallo's condition flared up, but it seems the savior of misbehavior isn't apologizing at all. On Twitter, Graves said it was more conducive to be mad than wrong, implying that he was helping Ranallo and shared a meme saying the sun, the moon, and the truth can't be hidden. With this being Twitter, Graves' comments led to a barrage of his fans sending insults to Ranallo on Twitter, causing the commentator to deactivate his Twitter and not work the Survivor Series announce team. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said that the WWE wasn't happy with Graves for his comments, but decided not to take him off commentary and that they are sympathetic to Ranallo and his condition. Graves must have heard what Meltzer said and responded by calling him a false narrative pushing liar daring the journalist to give him a call. Graves' actions certainly haven't made the WWE look good, as Ronaldo's condition is well known, and the critical tweet by his co-worker that caused countless fans to verbally attack him is the last thing they need. That's not to say Ronaldo is immune to criticism, but surely if Graves had a problem, he should have addressed it in person rather than posting it online for the world to see first. In response, Meltzer said that after three days, Graves could at least apologize tomorrow and show some remorse, rather than doubling down on his controversial bad attitude that has got him in this mess in the first place. This didn't go down well with Graves, who sarcastically responded by saying his phone isn't ringing, and alleged that Meltzer would make a rumor story about this as well. Morrow's good friend Frank Shamrock has been very public about his beef with Graves after his comments, but after making the valid point that social media has made people too comfortable with running their mouths, 
Graves responded in his standard troll fashion, asking whether Shamrock had gotten that post approved by Meltzer and asked why Shamrock and Meltzer didn't meet him face to face to discuss things like men. Of course, the irony and hypocrisy here is that had Graves taken his own advice and discussed his issues with Ronaldo's commentary, this whole situation could have been avoided. It may not be Graves' best idea to insult the former UFC middleweight champion, as Shamrock has said that that was Graves' tweet, not his, and asked him to stop by the next time WWE is in LA. Going after someone with a mental health condition and helping lead countless more to attack that same person has unsurprisingly not gone down well with many wrestling fans, with the hashtag Corey Graves popping up on social media over the past few days. Fans will have to wait and see what Graves has to say about this on After the Bell, but it's unlikely that the former NXT Tag Champion is enjoying this public shaming. This also isn't the first time Graves has gotten in hot water because of what he's said and done, but it looks like he'll be okay, while Ronaldo is still scheduled to call the action this Wednesday for NXT. And finally today, we're focusing on the remaining news from Monday Night Raw, as the post-Survivor Series edition of the show had a lot for fans to digest. In women's division action, fans saw a rematch from WrestleMania 34, as Charlotte battled Asuka in an excellent matchup. After chasing Kyrie Sane into the crowd, Flair turned her attention to the remaining women's tag team champion, and though the Queen nearly had the match won on multiple occasions, a distraction by the returning Sane and green mist by Asuka sealed the win for the Kabuki Warrior. In tag team action, the AOP tried to prove themselves after Seth Rollins' scathing words earlier in the night with a dominant victory over Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. This isn't the first time these two teams have come to blows, as the resident figure collectors were supposed to challenge for the Raw tag team titles last week but were stopped by the super heavyweights who have made a habit of demolishing the former champions. Andrade kept up his winning ways once again on Raw, picking up the win over Akira Tozawa in convincing fashion. After facing Rollins last week for the chance to captain Team Raw, it seems the former NXT champion is taking the architect's comments to heart, but it'll be interesting to see what this new Rollins has to say about his old rival. In another dominant display, Eric Rowan destroyed another local competitor, as it was Kyle Roberts' turn to feel the wrath of the former tag team champion. To Robert's credit, the hapless jobber did try to take a peek at what Rowan has been carrying around for the past few weeks but this only infuriated the bludgeon brother more. Dismantling Roberts with an iron claw, Rowan eventually got the pinfall victory and remains to be the only person who knows what is under that burlap cover. In a shocking appearance, Matt Hardy was in action, as the last time fans saw the Woken one, he and his brother Jeff were vacating the SmackDown tag team titles they just won from the Usos. Unfortunately, a severe leg injury forced the pair to relinquish the titles without ever having a chance to defend them, but Matt showed little ring rust in his very first match back. After seven months away from TV, Hardy showed up in his classic Team Extreme attire, showing no hints of being broken or woken, but came up short against Buddy Murphy. Once the match was finished, Black came face to face with Buddy Murphy, who once again challenged the former NXT champion to a fight but was sent flying by the Dutchman with a jumping knee of his own. Claiming that Murphy is owed, the feud between these two is growing nicely, as fans will have to see what comes next between WWE's self-professed greatest secret and the ominous man from Amsterdam. It's clear that Hardy was being used to help build the budding storyline between Black and Buddy Murphy, but how do you feel Hardy will do on his own? Leave a comment below, and as always, thanks for watching.